Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about an interesting alternative when you're playing against E4, E5 when you're white. Um, although I think the Rolo pairs and to some degree the Scotch are probably the best systems for white, uh, when I say best I mean the most correct systems for white to be playing, I don't necessarily think that they're the most practical systems, particularly not for the club player. I mean when you play the Rolo pairs you've you've often got to know 25 moves of theory. You have, to, you have to know how to deal with the Marshall Gambit. You have to know how to deal with the Schleeman. You have to know how to deal with various other sidelines. And even when you go into the open variation or the closed variation, you have various different lines you have to work out. You have to know how to play an open position, a closed position, a complicated position, and a boring one at sometimes as well. So it's not, not really a very easy thing to be learning. Um, I'm going to suggest a system today called the Gleck system. Now, there's some advantages of the Gleck in that it's not really a system which has been studied all that thoroughly, even by strong players. Of course, there's some people who have studied it to death. Gleck himself has studied it a lot. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it gives you a lot of room for some for some possibilities of creating your own ideas, and, and some of what I'm going to show you today are my own ideas. Um, you know, maybe they'll be proven wrong by some grandmaster who you play them against next. But some interesting ideas and some interesting food for thought in in what's been, I suppose, a relatively unexplored opening. So we'll switch to the board and we'll have a look at what the Gleck system is and how to actually play it. E4, E5. Uh, a lot of players avoid playing E4 because they actually don't really have anything good to play against e5 but hopefully the gleck may change this um, knight f3 knight c6 now i'll make a little side note here that of course black doesn't have to play knight c6 they can actually play petrov's defense knight f6 and in which case um the gleck is actually a very useful transpositional weapon against petrov's you just simply play knight c3 anyway and after knight c6, well, you, you go back into a Gleck system. The Gleck being g3 after a four knight start. So if, if black plays bishop b4 here, you simply d3 and you're back into a Gleck system if you want it to be. Um, but we'll go, we'll go from the start, from the main line. So knight f3, knight c6, and now you play knight c3 and black replies with knight f6, and this is called the four knights, the four knights opening. Uh, the, and there's a number of different things you can do here, you know, the, the scotch gambit with d4, or you can play bishop c5, but, but this is where I want to talk about the gleck. The gleck is g3. So this is the gleck system. It starts from here. Now, a number of different approaches for black. Of course, of course, black can simply try to play very symmetrically, or black can actually take the gleck system on. So I'll go, I'll go through the, I'll go through black's main line first, which is essentially to take the gleck system on, and that, and that, that involves rough a plan of d5. So the logic behind this is black's decided, all right, white's doing something on the edge. I'm going to uh, hit straight and hit hard in the centre. So d5, you capture here, oops, and knight captures. So now you just continue with your development. Bishop g2. By exchanging these pawns, you've actually opened up your, your Fanchetto bishop. It's now a very, very strong piece. And it's not so easy now for black to, to necessarily find particularly good squares. What, what black will do in some move order or another, and you've, you've got to go and look at the move order properly when you do these sorts of things. At some, black will develop the bishop either to c5 or e7. They'll play bishop e6, and they'll swap the knight at some stage. We'll go, I'll, go with, I'll go with bishop e6 for now. Next is d3. Now, oh, I will say one thing. After takes, Recapture this way with a B point. They can't really push the pawn too far because the pawn will become a weakness later on in the game. So what will normally happen, bishop develops itself here. 
and then d3. Now, the moves for black are f6 at some stage, bishop, bishop e7, or bishop c5, uh, castles, etc., queen d7. I'm, I'm more interested in the moves for white, because you're going to play these moves regardless which exact sort of thing black plays. Your moves in some order or another, and you have to decide the order yourself depending on how blacks set themselves up. Castles, rook e1, very important. If you can ever play knight g5, it's a very useful move. Well, in this specific case you can't, but here you can. If you can get this, this dark squared bishop off the board, it's very, very useful. Um, if you can't get it off the board, the knight is always quite useful sitting here. And, and you even have annoying themes on the h7 pawn, in, in some cases. Uh, more interesting though is how you develop your queenside pieces. Of course, it's, it's, it's totally normal, totally natural to develop your bishop like this, onto d2. But what can happen now is actually quite interesting. You can also play c4 and manoeuvre the bishop to c3 and really gang up on this e-pawn. Um, you almost, when you can force f6, you can actually start, you can expose this bishop a little bit and it has no protection. In some lines, although, albeit not all of them, you can even start trying to find a d4 push by moving your bishop back, maybe even with rook b1 and even going the whole way back, pushing c3 followed by d4. So you're kind of playing the game more in the queen side and in the centre. Which which leads me which leads me to the to the rook b1 move. And that can happen whether the bishop's at home on c1, on c3, even on d2, even on b2. I'll put it on c3 for the time being though. Rook b1's a useful move. It attacks the b pawn more often than not. And it works very well in conjunction with the g2 bishop. If they push the b pawn your bishop really opens itself up and it's, it's going to cause a lot of damage here. Um, black has to be very, very careful and that the bishop doesn't slice through the position too much. Um, often black can try to defend either by putting a rook behind the pawn, queen, bishop, whatever, even a bishop back here. Um, the rook b1 move is a very, very useful move, but, it, but not only because it attacks down the b-file, there's actually, there's actually a second purpose where, where the rook really, really can create havoc. And it's, it's quite, a remarkable, quite a remarkable plan. Bishop, bishop moves back, probably to a1, also possibly to d2. Plan d4. Once d4 has been inserted, so obviously black's not going to blunder a piece here, but we're, we're looking at themes, we're not looking at variations. Bishop will move back somehow or another. And then you have a rook manoeuvre, rook b5. And the rook can actually switch all the way over to the h-file. When the bishop's here, it's not going to happen, but it's a general theme that will happen quite a lot in this opening, more, more so than you would think. Um, but this is just a general overview. Of course, there's variations which you have to look at. You're not going to learn this just from this video. You'll need to go and get a book or a program or something or a hundred games played with the Gleck to understand this. But this is just a general theme which you can practice by playing Blitz. But have a look at the exact moves in a, in a more, I suppose, a more specific book on it. Um, this, is, this is what happens if Black takes on the Gleck. But more often than not, and black's probably going to try to keep things symmetrical. But when black keeps things symmetrical, you, uh, you as white have the opportunity to complicate. So I'll go through a couple of ideas which, have, which you can play if black tries to just simply sit and keep things symmetrical. So back to our, back to our original position, G3. If black copies, for example, Simply fee and shadow your bishop, put your king to safety, play d3, and then you have you have some quite interesting ideas. Now, anyone who's played the four knights regularly enough, even if they haven't played the Gleck, will, will roughly know something about the pin on f6, the idea of bishop g5, followed by knight d5, etc. The same, the same plan can be played in the Gleck. Uh, there's no reason you can't actually do it. Although... 
I think an interesting idea, and it's something I've, I'm not sure how many GMs have played this, but um, I've, I've been trying it myself, and I think it's quite a reasonable plan, is to play this opening in the centre, and even on the queen side. Um, knight d5. So the idea being that you temporarily double your pawns. I, I think it's sort of difficult. For, if, um, if black ignores this, you're really going to start gaining some serious space in this position. Um, you know, if black, can, black may play this, but then you can sort of start pushing c4. Another very interesting idea I like in the black is rook b1 here and just playing b4 and b5. I think I think this is this is actually my own idea, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone stronger than me who's actually played it themselves. Um, I think it's very interesting to just play rook b1, b4, a4, and play the position on the queen side. Um, just because, and I think this is a, a general rule for chess itself. Just because an opening, just because a game has started with e4 and it's and it's a king side opening, it doesn't mean you have to play the whole game on the king side. You can actually play a kingside opening on the queen side. Um, very useful to be able to play on both sides of the board. Uh, rook b1, first interesting idea. Secondly, knight d5. So if what if black ignores it, you simply build up. But if black takes, you temporarily double your pawns. But then you continue on with c4, and then you push d4 in the center and relieve the doubled pawns. And the resulting position. It gives you a, a sort of a niggling space advantage. So you'll often get this type of thing in an Alakine's defense in, say, an exchange variation, or even more so in a Fianchetto King's Indian. So almost similar to a d4 type opening. And you'll, you'll gradually build up your space and gradually just push and try to squeeze your opponent here. Um, another, another interesting theme, and I suppose a more obvious one, is how to play the opening on the king side. Uh, in the, in this case, so if, um, if if you're not really comfortable playing that, you'd sort of rather play it on the king side. Of course, you've just got your general theme of playing it like a king's Indian. So moves such as h3, knight to uh, h4, and then f4, queen e1 first, uh, protecting your knight, f4, and just gradually going for a big smash toward the king. Although well, I sort of think this plan is perhaps a little bit simplistic. That said, if it works, um, well, that's not really going to matter. Um, what, I, what I do tend to find is that system can work quite well when blacks develop the bishop at c5. And, and I'll go through that next. Um, but in this position with um, where, blacks, where blacks simply copying you, I prefer a queen side type play, but if you're ad absolutely adamant on, of, about playing it on the king side, as long as you protect your king on h2, you can actually do this build up with, with reasonable efficiency. Now the final line I'll look at is exactly what I just said, is bishop c5. So after our, after our, main, uh, our main moves, we play the gleck and then bishop c5 um, in this position. I haven't really, to be completely honest, I haven't really analysed at all the lines with knight takes, uh, recaptures and d4. Um, I think that's more just something that you can look at tactically. Uh, what I'd rather look at strategical ideas. Um, the first one, in, in this sort of position, and again, it doesn't matter if they've played it. And the, the reason I haven't looked at those exact ideas is because whether they play it on this move or they play it later and play waiting moves now, uh, this is what I'm more interested. I'm more interested in the in the actual strategical ideas of the position. Um, bishop g2 castles, for example, or let, let's say d6 to avoid the tactics. Castles, castles. You've got a few ideas here. The first one is simply try to get rid of the bishop. Full stop. So if it moves back, is take it. Um, if it moves here perhaps playing something like c3 or even a3 uh, here. And of course, you'll, you'll do this without the pawn hanging on e4. You'd throw in a move like rook e1 first. Uh, so bishop here, c3, here, here, something like this, eventually taking. You may do that with a3 as well, but a move, something that I think is actually probably more, uh, more in keeping with the position is simply d3. And then you follow up with bishop e3. 
the, the idea being that you'll swap this and open your F file. Now, a few ways of playing it. You can play it in the centre, but I don't think that's necessarily great. Because, I mean, when you get to the centre, what do you do with it? You can push through the centre and make your own bishop even worse. Or you can swap and then you've just got doubled isolated pawns. So I don't believe playing this in the centre is right. I think this should be played on the king side. And the way, the way I'd go about it, um, knight h4, trying to gain the f5 square for a piece. Uh, it can work in conjunction with knight d5 too. Um, gradually just pile up on the f5. It, again, it's a bit of a crude sort of attack, but... Just because something's crude, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Um, rook f1, queen f1, bishop h3, h3, very, very useful thing to know about. Getting rid of your bad bishop and also helping with your development. Um, again, black, um, black needs, black may play differently to this, so we don't, we don't want to throw all our eggs in one basket. And, and please don't think this is going to be an absolute be all and end all. You know, you, you may actually create some of your own ideas in some of these positions anyway. It's, it's a very a very unexplored opening. Just just before I finish, I'll, I'll just show one other interesting idea as well. And that's, um, and that's again, if black, um, if black plays a sort of, I suppose, um, a symmetrical type structure and and that's, um, you can sort of almost try to play the same in the, the same as the, the take on the black variation. We can actually try to play it with white. Um, play an early d4. So, for example, an early d4 move at some point, and then get, get a similar position to what, um, to what black had in the first variation. Um, whether you can get d4 in so early is not so. Is not so clear, but you basically try to take the position on, and that extra tempo that you have here it can really come in handy. But well, I, I'm not sure that it's necessarily the best idea. I think there's probably some, there's probably better ideas, including the ones I've, I've already discussed. But in conclusion, if if you want an opening which is going to give you a fighting chance against against e5, and, and an opening too where you're not going to you're not going to basically be playing against a book or a database or somebody's coach. An opening where you're going to be playing real chess, where it's you versus your opponent. I think the Glex definitely, definitely something that you'd you'd want to consider. I also believe it's the sort of thing that could be a good part-time weapon in your repertoire. If you've um, if you say you do play the low pairs or King's Gambit or whatever. Um, and you learn the Glek, and you can use it for the odd game as a surprise weapon. I think it can be very effective for that. Although, again, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not averse to playing it every game either. Uh, and it's also very useful against Petrov's defense and those sorts of avoidance type, type variations. Um, good luck with it, and and it's the sort of thing I, I hope you actually, you contribute to the ideas in it as well. You might actually come up with something of your own. Uh, let's hope you do. Thank you.